to another episode of Red Web Case Files, where we get hands-on, tangible, tactile, with the things that we uncover in our podcast. Alfredo, you know it is Halloween it time. It is, it is. It's not October, it's, <laughs> it's Halloween o- for It's me. October, we've got, um, you know, on our podcast, Red Web, we have uh, spooky houses that we're looking at. Yes. And we even have a Halloween special. Yep. We're on site, Penhurst Asylum. Oh yeah. So we are going to need a lot of tech Mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of whatever's going on in Penhurst Asylum. We're also doing a live stream ghost hunt with Travel Channel's Ghost Tober. Stay tuned for that. But today, we're diving into all the tech that we brought on site to Penhurst, as well as a few other things that we didn't sneak into our bags. Just going over some ghost tech. If you are interested in doing your own investigations, this is some of the stuff that you're gonna need and what they do. Two things. Yes. Walked onto the set. There's a lot of ghost hunting tech. There's a lot. There's I've got like, all, we're talking about a lot. I've got it all down here around my shins. You can't Secondly, really see. I found out very expensive stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, Let's start with one like, of the most expensive ones, actually. Oh, we're going to the, to the top. Apparently, this little uh, number here, the uh, paranormal music box. Actually, hold on now. Hold on. Wait. It's shaped like a coffin, upside down. Yeah. It's got, it's got a little engraving here, and you and it plays this little song, and uh, right now the. Uh, something creepy and when you turn I, it on the idea mm-hmm. is that you're engaging right uh, the spirits with uh, a song and this light will light up the spirit oh there's a light too light yeah it it'll it'll tell you basically if you are engaging with any sort of entity or energies that are showing up because of the song you're playing it's a very simple device very straightforward a mere seven hundred dollars i just i just need to hold on i just need a second to come to grips with myself because i know all this tech mm-hmm has been used in the field. Yes, So absolutely. when you pull it out, I was like, ooh, and then it started making the noise and I went, hold on. It's okay, okay. I got you another one. Okay. This one you might recognize because we brought this I'm one on location it. to Penhurst. Oh. This is the Boo Bear, the Boo Buddy. And uh, he might look sweet, cute, and uh, very defensible, but actually this little guy is holding a lot of tech inside. I'm actually gonna turn them on so you can get a little gander. So uh, this little guy senses motion, right? Yes. And temperature. Yes. And, and he also records. He records EVPs, electronic voice phenomenons. Right. And he does that by also asking his own questions, like, "Do you want to play?" Yep. He encourages activity, so you can. And what we did was we left him alone in a room. We did. The playroom. It was left alone in a playroom, and the playroom. You gotta watch the episode. He wakes up. Was in a place that was not on the first floor. Oh no, we were deep in a basement <laughs> somewhere. So yeah, we're gonna let that guy kind of hang out there, but uh, he kind of asks questions and as he moves or as he senses temperature differentiations, like there are lights like that light up lights. to indicate and eventually he'll say something creepy like, what's your name? And then you can take yeah. all of the recordings back off his Th- device. This will come up in the Penhurst episode. But one of the freaky things yeah, so it'll sit there. So we left it in the room and left this little guy just to ask questions and try and sense and detect things. But while we were investigating, you would hear the little boo bear down the hall. Yeah. And it's like pitch dark. Oh yeah. And, and we're in the middle of nowhere, so yep. it's so quiet. And so you just hear like, hi, what's your name? And it, let me tell you, you don't get used to it. You really don't. No, you don't. I'm waiting for somebody with a knife to come around these corners. All right, of course we have, I'm gonna leave the bear on Dude, so it can figure out. I still have a little bit of trauma from the bear. Yeah, it's like yeah. talking and I felt like I was back there. All right, so while the bear kind of keeps freaking us out, we also right. have EMF readers. Now this is something that pretty much everybody knows if they know about ghosts. So I'll right. give you the second one. So, so the idea here is that it measures electronic magnetic fields. Oh, electromagnetic fields to say it properly. Um, and when it senses something, I wonder if I can get my watch near it or if I can put it near right. an, another it's electronic green. device. But it will light up based on activity happening and the idea there is spirits. I like holding All right, that is freaking me out. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, so this is, uh, this device measures electromagnetic fields. Mm-hmm. The idea there is that if there are ghosts or spirits in the area, they tend to draw on electromagnetism. Right. And if they're in- interfering with those fields, that will show up here. For a lot of people that are gamers, this might look familiar. And yes. let me go ahead and point it out to you. Let me, let me make this clear. 
I heard a back pop. Hold on. It's phasmophobia. This is your EMF reader. <laughs> Where's my sanity pills? When you're, when you're running around like that, and you got a little EMF, and you go, oh, he's over here. Yeah. They're over here. We'll cut in some gameplay so you can understand what we're talking about. But that's your EMF reader. Holy Holy Yo, is this, is there an orb? But we should put the camera down. Uh, we also have, of course, a voice recorder. But this one in particular is uh, designed and benefited by EVPs, right? So it's a very sensitive voice recorder. And the idea there is that if there are any latent spirits in the area that are trying to respond to your questions, this can capture that. So if you've ever heard those moments in uh, ghost hunts where they have to boost the volume and hear that kind of shh, that white noise, but mm -hmm. then you hear a, a voice or a sound within it, this device can kind of help capture So those. it's got mini USB. It looks like it has a playback mode. Yep. Um, you can plug in your headphones and you can plug in a microphone. Yeah. So I guess it's like you really want to have like a higher end mic and you want yep. to amplify it. But uh, we use cool. this a few times. We'd set it on the ground, kind of ask some questions. And then we have those recordings now so we can analyze if we got anything. All right, plenty mm. to dive into. Let's see what else we got. Now this little device, I honestly don't even know the name of this because I haven't used or read about it in so long. But very simply, this is a device that senses uh, mo movement, but also it's very sensitive to like, as you get closer to these copper wires. Uh, Electromagnetic? Yes, exactly. So this is a, essentially another way to have something like this. But if you have multiple of these devices, you can scatter them throughout the room or down the hallway. Oh my God. And at that point, you're not sensing one location around you like this. Instead, you're seeing maybe perhaps some movement. So you okay. can say, if there's a spirit there, come down the hallway and you might see lights light up okay. as they move. So imagine if we had like 50 of these. Right. And we just lined them up like every five feet down the tunnel. How terrifying would it be if you just saw one trigger all the way down at the end and then they started triggering <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm glad I'm not there anymore. Oh my God. I wonder if they're overwhelmed just, just now that they're on camera because look, even when shaken. Well, when we were on site. They're like, not lighting up. You get close to it, you look at it and yeah. it lit up. Yeah. It was hard not to get to light up. But we actually like this played around was lighting with it, up down tested here. it and everything like that and we couldn't get it not to light up. Yeah, let um, me see. But yeah, having a bunch of these would be very oh. interesting. A more advanced version of that is the REM pod. What? You gotta get the signal going, bud. What is, like, there's so many devices. I I'm gonna turn this saw off. the table, um, I walked on set, I saw the table full of devices and I went, I don't wanna see them. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm seeing them, it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, and we've got about halfway through. So the idea here is that you have something very similar to some of these other devices. A lot of these devices, there's a Venn diagram effect where they kind of overlap in their purpose. Right. This device is a little bit more advanced, very similar, less fluffy to the bear in that this middle icon or this middle uh, red light Whoa. is specifically for temperature differences. And right now it's quite cool in here, hence the light being on. But then, otherwise, this antenna radi radiates out the uh, electromagnetic field, and so it senses, as you have proximity to it, the lights, as you can see, light up. And then the closer that they are, or if you increase the sensitivity of that right. range, these other lights kind of go off. There's green, blue, and, and so on. As you can see, as you get really close to that antenna, it starts freaking out. You can change the range. You can change where you want your zero to be, i.e. where it has no response. Right now, it's zeroed in very tight because we're sitting at a table. Right. Oh, interesting. But zero that out, light will be off. And then if a cold or a hot wave comes through, it will indicate a, a big difference. Interesting. You know what? I'm going to leave that on just in case we get any spirits in here while we're let me zero out that temp. All right. Next. If you're in here, just chill. Uh, all right, the next one, we have this slender device. Now this uh, is, uh, well this and the uh, voice recorder here are donated to us by one Kelsey Childs, AKA Haunted Detective. Do you wanna pop in real quick? Woo, woo, so, woo, so this, woo. thank you for letting us use these. She uses these on her own investigations. This is Kelsey. Hey guys, here oh, Hello. Yeah, <laughs> I've been here the whole time. All right. Oh God. So this is like a laser grid. Hold on, I'll shine it on Kelsey. Oh. Oh, no, not on your eyes. You're oh. shine it on Fredo. 
So as you can see, like the, it shines out a laser grid that you can adjust to what kind of dots per inch you want the grid to be. All right, well, you can see it a little bit. But the idea here with this laser grid is that you can change the kind of dots per inch that you have here mm -hmm. uh, to make it a little bit more of a tighter grid. And with that, you, we kind of just laid it down with the bear, set up a camera, and it enables you to see any sort of movement in the air whatsoever. Are we talking about like any? Like any. we would see dots like kind of sparkle and that's yeah. because like dust just dust in the air was floating around different particles you went to Goatman bridge did yeah. you use this item i did it was actually really spooky yeah and the reason why you can't really see it on the camera right now is because there was definitely something there and all of our equipment just completely drained so these are these are like the two things like we said we borrowed from you and these things their batteries just kind of so this Zapped was still out. on, and it was pitch black there, and you couldn't see anything. It's definitely a lot lighter than it was. In fact, I think oh, I think it might be low. I think it just went out. It's a, it's essentially out. Yep. There's a spirit in this room. But that's what happens. Um, all right, thank you, Kelsey, thank for you. popping thank in. You. Of course. Here, let me and scoot out of the way. Out. All right. So that was Kelsey. You'll see Kelsey or hear from her in uh, a future episode of Red Web. I don't know when this episode's coming out, but it's on the Amityville episode of Red Web. She's got a theory that she discusses. But moving on, remember one of these guys? Holy hell. Remember digital cameras? Hold on a second, let me just get a little snap. I wanna see if you've got any orbs around you. Funny until there's orbs. Right, so we have digital cameras, of course, but this time, I mean, I'm gonna show you this, but this time what we did is we used our phones and we used the flash on our phones because the idea there is you wanna to try to capture orbs. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Penhurst, despite all of the bugs and all of the dust, we didn't get any like orb orbs. A little no, spoiler alert. I even, um, I, w I, w I even got to the point where, you know, I was in the basement and lights off, taking mm -hmm. selfies, just to, just to see. Then, you right. know, when we all came up to, to safety, that's when I opened my phone, I was like zooming in to see if I could see anything and yeah. then changing the contrast and everything like that, the brightness. Um, but no, nothing, so. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people think when you see an orb, it must be a bug or it must be dust, which is a common way to debunk those. You definitely want to consider that. But when you're in such a dusty and bug ridden environment, it's, it's I'm surprised that we just didn't get any. Right. So I don't know, I don't know. Any that we could just go, <clears throat> ah, it must be yeah. something else. What is that? So this device is a kind of handheld seismometer, if that's the right word. Okay. It basically, so if I were to set this on the ground, this is your sensitivity to this particular device. Whoa. In here is a magnet in a 3D printed uh, kind of casing. Mm -hmm. And then there's a sensor around that magnet because it has like a little bit of give and movement to it. So you set that down on a surface, whether it be a floor or a table or whatever, and depending on the surface that you set it on, you can change your sensitivity. So oh, it's really cool. And I'll demonstrate if you like, you know, put it somewhere where the light's down at the bottom. And then okay. imagine on footsteps, Oh, and then if I make it really, let's say... Make it less sensitive. Because if you're on something like this wood table, you know, it might... One. Yeah. Really throw it down here, let's see. That way, like, yeah. you change the sensitivity to it. So if you're on a really hard surface, you might want to raise that up. And if you're on something that can move a lot... Yeah, if you're on, lot, like, concrete, you might want to raise it up and then that way. Oh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that way you can kind of sense if there's knocking happening, any footsteps that you hear, this is a way to try to visualize those footsteps because a lot of the time the sounds that you hear are very quiet. Yeah. And so you have not only your audio devices, your cameras, et cetera, to capture the audio, but hopefully other ways to visualize all the different stimulus that you have doing a ghost investigation. Got it. Uh, other than that, there's nothing on the table to show you, but we did have night vision cameras, classic. And right. then uh, you would want a UV light or something beyond the visible spectrum in order to light that up. That's what night vision uses is the far UV. Or mm. I don't think it's infrared, right? Look, we are uh, baby ghost hunters. We're just, yeah, we've and... only done this twice. Mm -hmm. We have a third one coming up. So this is like, rough around the edges, early days, getting to know all of our equipment. Cause like, again, we didn't take all of this. Right. We took what we knew. Yep. And we took a concise, uh, pr like we took, uh, let's see, we took this, this. Yeah, reader. We took these guys. The bear. And of course your flashlight. So most of the stuff you see on the table, we didn't dabble with. Cause otherwise we would have been overstimulated. So I will say this. Yes. Novice ghost hunters. Uh huh. We've got a ton of equipment here. Yes. I can't help but notice 
that everything here, okay, mm -hmm. is to either locate or contact the paranormal. Right. Where is anything to protect this? Where's like, I'm talking like holy water, crosses, I don't like I don't, I don't know. I don't know what exists out there. A uh, bulletproof vest with a cross on it. Like where is all like I'll, I'll be honest. This is a question that, that Trevor has not been primed for. Um, none of this here protects us. <laughs> if there's a ton of you know what? If there's a like a ton of stuff, a body we, should, armor? we should do that as like an, another episode. Oh, you want like you want like ghost hunting protective gear? Why don't we do an episode where we have the ghost antagonizing gear? We got the Ouija board that we don't say goodbye to. You know, we've got I thought, the, I thought you were joking. We got the and dowsing then, rods. And then I forgot that there's a Ouija board and other stuff. I just went with the tech. There's lots of other ways. No, to no, this is this spirits. is awesome. But I just kept going. There's no sweet. way to protect. I just kept going. Sweet. If all this went off in a haunted <laughs> place. You're right. We got nothing. Right, right. We, we, we do we, need, we got another, we but need these, to consider our but defenses. these legs. Right. That's all we got. <laughs> Nature's number one defense, these legs. I will say, I'm bolting. The other defense for me is just like the comfort of, of light. Just being... Right. I remember when it, like, when it flickered. Oh, when it went out when yeah. we asked that question? Thank God that didn't happen the rest of the time. But I was just like, just I was just like, let me just look around this room. Hey, is anyone here? Light went out. Oh God. <laughs> so just like it just must be malfunctioning. I don't know. But I want to. I want everything that I could take. You know what I mean? Right. I want holy water grenades. Right. I, I want the whole nine <laughs> Here's yards. Sound. He just chucks a like a balloon. Right. Uh, a water balloon down the hall. I, I want like lasers that I could rig on doors. So if I run through it, it's just phew, cross yeah. goes up. Yeah. I don't. I have no idea. What's that glass no they clue. had in Thirteen Ghosts? Oh. Motion detector goes off. They did. Glass doors door slam door closed. Slammed. Can't get through. For some they're blessed. Forgot, yeah. It was because of the glyphs that were written. Oh, on that's it. right. It was like some special like language or something. But yeah. Yeah, so this is the ghost hunting tech that we have on hand. There's a lot of other equipment out there, and if you want us to get hands-on with that, let us know. Recommend them in the comments below or email us, redweb at roosterteeth.com. Because, again, this is just scratching the surface. As yeah. Fredo said, we're novices. Uh, this is the beginning of our ghost hunting uh, kind of endeavors as we are moving, not moving, but right. adding to our podcast now, mm -hmm. maybe getting into the field, getting hands-on. Yeah, this is... The beginning, okay? You guys are coming in at ground level right. task force. Some of you guys were coming in at like below ground level. Right. Like you were there like real early. But this is like on the field ground level stuff. Right. And so when we are like primo of the crop professional top tier ghost hunters, or remember we, these humble beginnings. Right. Or we you know or we didn't make it out of a hunt. God bless us. <laughs> uh, you can go back and be like, wow, look at them. They were so happy. <laughs> if someone doesn't make it out of a hunt, we're going to have a very tough time re-scripting re this whole thing to say, Fredo was never here. I don't know. It was always just me. I, ah, try, I don't know what to try, tell you. Try cutting around me now. Whoa, look at that blur. Do you guys see that? Could have been anything. But thanks mm. for joining us on another Case Files episode. You guys have been absolutely amazing supporting us at Red Web and now on this show. So Halfway you. through the season, we got four more episodes to come. If you want more after this whole thing is done, if you liked what we started here, we're still kind of evolving this show, mm -hmm. let us know. Give that thumbs up at the bottom below because it lets YouTube know to support this show and continue feeding that uh, beast of an algorithm. We have to go. I have to leave. All right. Thank you.